What's up everyone, my name is Andrew Yalo and today I'll be breaking down who I believe has the best chance to win Survivor 46. As of recording this video, the first three episodes have been released and I feel like we've seen enough to gauge proper impressions of most of the cast since we've gotten to know most of them by now. With such a strong start to the season and many conflicting personalities already getting in the way, it's hard to say for sure who will win and who will fail. Before we get into this list, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and turn on notifications to stay in the loop on when I post more content. Check the links in the description if you want to stalk me on social media like, I don't know, Mike Boogie? A fair warning before we dive into this list is that there will be spoilers for the first three episodes of Survivor 46, so if you haven't seen those, I highly suggest you go watch them right now. Anyway, let's get into today's video. Some of my opinions may turn out to be completely wrong, and I'm fully inviting this. I would love for the rest of this season to be super unpredictable. Unpredictable like when Malcolm pulled out two idols in Karim Owen. Maybe a moment like Eric giving up immunity in fans vs favorites. Or something as shocking as James walking into tribal council with an IV stand attached to him. Yeah, that really happened. Who knows, maybe if Randon got pulled from the game in the jury phase, they would have done a live MRI and revealed his results at tribal. Since Jelinski, Jessica, and Randon were all eliminated already as of recording this, I obviously won't be including them in this ranking. We'll start this video off by naming three people who have no chance of winning this game at all. This is based on either the edit they've received so far, or the personality and how positively or negatively they've been portrayed in the season. I've been going back and forth trying to figure out who belongs in my top three and my bottom three, but this is what I've landed on, and I'm going to do this in no particular order. The first person I don't believe will win this season is Liz. To start off, from the very first episode, she's been portrayed as fairly negative by the other people on her tribe. I think Liz could make it to the merge, and if she did make it to Final Tribal Council, she just wouldn't get any votes because she's already bragged about how much money she makes outside the show. I also don't think she's really likable. I'm sorry, Liz, if you're watching, but she hasn't come off very friendly, and she was just annoying as f during the second immunity challenge. I like to put her in the category of Culpeppers and Russell Hance because everyone openly knew that outside of the game, they were well in life and didn't necessarily need the money as opposed to someone who did. I don't want to make it seem like the only reason why she's that low on my list is solely because she flaunts her wealth. I just think right now she's one of those obvious picks on the cast that will not have a chance to win this season no matter who she sits next to. The next person on my list I believe will not win this season is Tim. Tim really doesn't strike me as someone who has the personality to be a winner. This was a pretty easy choice for me. After the first three episodes, Tim has only gotten six confessionals in total. I understand it's tough for somebody to get a lot of screen time when Yanu eats up a lot of it, but for somebody like Tim, I forget he's on the cast half the time. Tim doesn't really give me much to work with this early on in the season. I'm pretty confident he won't win just based on this confessional chart alone. Since the new era, the only winner to receive zero confessionals in an episode was Erica from 41. I'd like to believe the winner gets edited so that the viewer can easily remember who they are throughout the season, with the exception of Chris Underwood, of course, but we all know why that is. I'm sorry, Tim, you're either going to surprise me at the merge or swap, or you won't win this game. It's simple as that. The last person in my bottom three is Soda. I feel bad for talking negatively about some of these players because I know most of them are probably really good people outside the game, but part of Survivor and winning the game, you need to have some sort of social awareness. Soda has made it blatantly obvious that they're not super aware of how they can make others feel, and their personality is way too extravagant and way too bubbly. The show is trying to show Soda in a negative light, and the voice of reason is surprisingly Venus on the Nami tribe right now. This tells me a few things. It tells me that Soda is not the person who comes out on top of this one-sided rivalry between her and Venus. And referencing back to her confessional count, she didn't get a single confessional in episode 3. And you really can't blame the medevac for this because if they wanted to, they really could have had her speak on Randon's exit. But if you notice, they use Venus's point of view instead. I don't think anyone would be shocked by my take here. If you are, I like to hear why. So in the comments, tell me why you think I'm wrong. All right, enough of the bottom three. Let's get up to the top of my list where the top three players who I think will most likely win this season. In no particular order, once again, and this shouldn't come as a shock to most people, but it's gonna have to be Charlie. I won't say that Charlie is one of my top contenders of the crown because of his overly positive rating on the Edgic. I'm not even a huge fan of his because I want him to break out of this Taylor Swift fanboy character arc he's in and maybe get a bit more personal with his life and differentiate himself in a better way than he already is right now. For instance, Ben is the cool hippie rock star. Love it. Q is a former athlete turned Survivor fan. Love it. Banu is a foreigner who learned English from Survivor. Wait, we've seen that before. I really don't like how Taylor Swift is Charlie's entire personality. I mean, we saw this last year with Katura and Bruce. It was, I mean, Bruce was in 36 of her 50 confessionals. It was ridiculous. 
However, Charlie gives me Carson from 44 vibes, and I can see him being strategic enough to be in the right side of numbers coming into the merge and slipping into final tribal council. He seems capable of convincing a jury, so that's why he's in my top three. On top of that, the edit right now is looking really good for him. My second top contender to win this season is surprisingly Banu. I will admit I can be getting fooled by the unpredictable editing team of the new era, but Banu to me is the face of Survivor 46 so far. He represents everything about this new era and he gives me Jam Jam vibes from 44. There are actually a lot of reasons I can see Banu excelling in this season. If you're a fan of the show, you may have thought it was Banu's last dance in the most recent Wednesday episode, but Q was planning on saving him and flipping on Kenzie anyway before Rand and got medevaced, meaning Banu probably would have been safe anyway. I personally think Banu is so entertaining to watch, his confessionals are pure gold, he's so genuine and real and raw, and I just like how vulnerable he is and I like that he's not trying to win by lying. Now I will admit his catchphrase of instead of winning a million dollars he wants to win a million hearts, that's obviously pretty corny, but I would be so happy for him if he would somehow be able to make it to the end without playing a deceptive game. We haven't seen it get done a lot, but I would like him to show that now in a new era season that it can be done. I think he can do it, I know most of you will disagree with me on this take, but I truly believe he's got the charisma to sway a jury. It also helps that as of right now he's already gotten more confessionals than anyone else on the season. I would honestly be really shocked if Banu got out before Merge because of how much time this edit has spent focused on him and his path to the end. But who knows, we could be getting fooled and this could be another Caleb situation. Alright, so we have two people now that as for the most part have been super clear winners in my eyes. This next one might not be as clear cut as the rest. Right now my third winner pick I'm looking at is Hunter from the Nami tribe. Hunter got a random segment done about him in episode 3 where he was shown as the tribe leader, essentially because of how outdoorsy and capable he is to survive on his own on the island. They showed him building his own bed, which to my knowledge is a survivor first. Then they showed what looked like vlog footage from Hunter's house where they show him having all these replicas of survivor puzzles that he's rebuilt of his own. For me, Hunter is either going to be getting out in the next two episodes or he's going deep into the game. Most of the public has been viewing him positively and his edit reflects him in the positive light as well. I feel like he hasn't done too much yet, but the editors are trying to include segments of him whenever it's convenient so we don't forget who this guy is. And you can say, hey, there's that guy that built his own bed. He's kind of cool. Oh wait, here he is again. He's in Merge. He did something. I hate having to constantly refer back to Survivor 44, but it seems like that's their cookie cutter template. But Hunter's edit reminds me a lot of Heidi. Sometimes a more under the radar but subtle edit could indicate that a person makes it really far in the game. If someone isn't being shown negative often, they most likely won't be seeing their torch snuffed anytime soon. As a film grad, these are things we pick up on while watching edits of reality shows. It's almost blatantly obvious for me most of the time who's going home and it's become more predictable for me over the years, but on a rare occasion Survivor will shock me. There were some other people that I considered putting in my top 3 like Tiffany, Ben, and Q, but I don't see them as winning in the end ultimately. Tevin and Kenzie were also my top contenders as well, but the most recent episodes have convinced me otherwise. Tevin has been shown in a bit of a more negative light, and with Banu leaking that Kenzie is running the show on Yanu, her chances of winning decrease significantly, making her emerge threat if she makes it. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I'll be trying to post more Survivor and Reality Show content weekly, so make sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future after I rebuild my entire computer setup with bamboo on the islands of Fiji.